what is up guys welcome back to the channel and what a week it been last night we got nxt and aew going head to head and both of them ended up delivering a heck of a show which we're gonna be discussing all of the highlights the surprises and debut and recap of the show in today's roundup we're also gonna be discussing the latest backstage news as we head into smackdown live major surprise that been rumored but it might not actually happen big confirmation regarding cm punk the latest on triple h and much more but before we get into it, you guys already know, make sure to elbow drop it and hit that notification if you haven't just yet to be fully up to date on all of my pro wrestling coverage. Nonetheless, let's get into it. And let's start off with some of the quick update. Coming up, we got SmackDown Live. It is going to be the premiere of it on Fox Network. So it's going to be massive. We already know multiple legends are going to be appearing there like Sting and even The Rock ended up confirming his appearance at the show. So it's going to be a good night. Aside from all of the other matches that have already been announced like Kofi Kingston versus Brock Lesnar, Roman Reigns versus Eric Rowan, Charlotte and Becky teaming up once again to take on Sasha Banks and Bayley, a ladder match between Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon, and so on. So it's a fully stacked show, but another superstar that's been rumored to be making a return slash appearance is John Cena, who is of course busy in Hollywood, and unfortunately it's not looking too good right now. Now, he has been teasing it over on Instagram that he will probably show up on Friday. But according to PW Insider, they indicated that while it is not impossible, it will be extremely difficult for John Cena to fly across the country in time to make the SmackDown show because on that same day, he's going to be filming for his upcoming DC movie. This is unfortunate, but at least Hollywood is giving The Rock a break on that day and we're getting him. With the fact that this is going to be one of John Cena's biggest role in any movie and it will probably end up being his bigger draw there's no way he's gonna be missing that type of commitment again it's not impossible and Vince McMahon does have his own plane but as of right now John Cena as a surprise it's not looking really likely moving into some other news and some big confirmation so CM Punk did an interview with Collider Live yesterday addressing the rumor that he auditioned for the WWE backstage studio news show he did not sugarcoat it and indicate that yes he auditioned for the actual show he was able to work with Renee Young and that he is open for business he didn't confirm that he is going to be in it but the fact that he auditioned for it and the fact that obviously Fox wants him is almost a guarantee that he's gonna be there also especially after what he said that he is not dealing with none WWE officials this is directly a Fox deal and he doesn't have to talk to anyone in power in the WWE he also indicated that even after Fox contacted him, nobody in the WWE contacted him for a possible return. He stated that he doesn't want to return to wrestling because he's not interested in the drama, the politics, the backstage and all of that, but also within the same minute or so indicated that he is a businessman and that he will be openly to actually talk to anyone if it is the right business. On this same day, which of course we got NXT going head to head with AEW, Triple H did a couple of interviews and even indicated that yes whatever CM Punk is doing is only with Fox nothing related to the WWE and as they always say to never say never because even though it might not happen anytime soon a CM Punk return to the WWE is always possible he also alluded to the heat that CM Punk and him had in the past indicating that whatever happened in the past just happened in the past so let's put it behind us and move forward the last thing that he indicated is that that is also a little bit outside of my purview at the moment because of course he is more focused on NXT but like I said never say never certainly very interesting words from Triple H and CM Punk and let's go ahead and get into the recap of AEW and NXT fair disclaimer I'm not gonna come out here and tell you that NXT was better than AEW or that AEW was better than NXT I'm just gonna review them one by one talk about the bad and the good and give you my general thoughts on it. It's 2019, there is no point of us arguing back and forth on which show was better, especially if you ended up watching both. Sure, we could share the opinions, but there is really no need for the extra argument. Which is why I'm not gonna come here and dissect it segment by segment, because I will lose my mind. So every Thursday, in the roundup that goes up, just like today, we will talk about the latest news, and I will get into the AEW and NXT shows. So let's go ahead and get started with week number one. And as I mentioned, 
mention, I'll give you guys my general thoughts. So here it is. I think that this week, AEW was more aimed at competing with Raw and SmackDown than NXT itself, while NXT was full on wrestling. It was a complete takeover from start to finish, with just one single backstage segment. So what I mean by this, starting off with AEW, the reason why I say it feels like they were more competing towards Raw and SmackDown type shows was because they started off hot with wrestling and then got into the backstage segments and the promos and rightfully so because it was to introduce more of the characters that we're gonna be seeing over the last couple of weeks something that of course NXT doesn't need to be doing because they already got established superstars that been on television for a while so besides the segments and the promos and so on AEW ended up having finished two matches that are very similar to what we get to see on WWE television Raw or SmackDown on a weekly basis with heels of course cheating to win the match mid-match interference like John Moxley coming in and attacking Kenny Omega to of course continue their feud and build up toward their big match we also got the typical attacks after certain matches and superstars confronting each other to build up new feuds while when we look at NXT it was just pure wrestling like I said match after match after match built just like a takeover so that is my general thoughts on both of the show but if you want my rating they were both thumbs up each of them did what they were supposed to do with that said let's go ahead and run down what went down on the show AEW started off with Cody Rhodes making an amazing entrance with Brandy Rhodes and he defeated Sammy Guevara very good match went over 25 minutes and Cody rolled up Sammy with a small package to pick up the victory after the match Cody Rhodes was supposed to be in an in-ring interview but he got attacked from behind by Chris Jericho the beatdown continued to commercial break which was picture in picture so you know that AEW tonight was limited commercial even though they didn't advertise it which technically is a good tactic to throw off the competition Chris Jericho then got on the microphone and of course told everyone who he is as if we all don't know who Y2J is you gotta love him up next we got MJF coming out with a mic and Cole out the crowd poor of course getting massive heat he is the biggest heel in AEW right now and called himself the fastest rising star in professional wrestling he then went on to defeat Brandon Cutler in a very quick match this did exactly what it needed to do showcase how great MJF is on the microphone and then of course go right ahead and give him a quick match we had SoCal and Censor appearing in front of the White House with Scorpio doing a Barack Obama impression while Chris Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian play Secret Service agents. They were then interviewed by the stage, which by the way looks amazing and is better than just doing the interview inside the ring or even in a backstage area. So I love that they're taking that route. And during this segment, the Lucha Brothers showed up. So they argued back and forth on who is the best tag team in the world, which led to Dim Malenko and other officials from backstage to put them apart. Again, building storylines with this superstars which is great just like Jack Evans and Angelico got into a confrontation with private party the third match of the night we got Pac defeating hangman Adam Page Pac kicked Page below the bell then hit a black arrow into the brutalizer and the referee Earl Habner stopped the match awarding the victory to Pac Dr. Brie Baker joined commentary for the next match which is the women's title match she of course is the number one contender to whoever won tonight and that was Riho defeating Nyla Rose to become the first AEW Women's Champion. Riho worked smart and fast throughout the match, eventually pinning Nyla Rose after hitting her with running knees to the face. So now we know that we're gonna be getting Riho taking on Brie Baker up next, which they might be saving it to the next pay-per-view. But all of this wasn't over. After this match, Michael Nakazawa announced that he was going to interview Riho in Japanese, but Nyla Rose attacked them both, which led to Kenny Omega Omega coming out to save Riho. They of course got history in Japan from teaming together in mixed tag matches and so on. So if you didn't know that then it might have been a little bit weird but it did provide it for a good transition because we got into the main event which was Chris Jericho, Santana and Ortiz defeating the elite Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. But there was a lot that happened in this match. Midway through John Moxley appeared and attacked Kenny Omega pulling him out of the match taking him to the backstage and giving him a power driver on a glass table. That sounded crazy. The match continued.
continue without him and Chris Jericho eventually pinned Matt Jackson after the Judas effect. After the main event, Cody Rhodes ran in and attacked Chris Jericho. Then Sammy Guevara ran in and attacked Cody. Dusty Rhodes came in to make the save. And last but not least, Jack Hager makes his debut, formerly known as Jack Swagger in WWE. He came in and ended up standing tall with the heels. It looks like they're going to be making a heel faction under the leadership of Chris Jericho. We will see if the faction route is what they're looking for. Regardless, this was a great way to end the show because now I want to tune in next week to see what is happening with all of these guys involved. As for NXT, I told you guys it was straight up wrestling and I do feel like in general this whole week, NXT had the best in-ring competition. They gave us the best bell-to-bell -bell wrestling. It started off with the NXT Championship, Adam Cole defeating Matt Riddle. This was a great back and forth match that lasted almost 30 minutes and it was hard hitting. After the match though, we got a bit of a shocker as Finn Balor music hit and he announced that he is now NXT. That certainly came out of nowhere. Up next, we got Velveteen Dream cutting a promo on Roderick Strong, indicating that he is focused on getting a rematch to get his North American Championship back. Up next, we got one of the best matches of the night, Io Shirai defeating Mia Yim. And all that I'm going to say is that when Io Shirai comes out there, I am absolutely glued to the television. I don't know about you guys, but everything from her heel entrance, to her presentation to what she does in the ring it's pretty much almost perfect than anyone right now they're doing great with her and it's just a matter of time before she actually becomes NXT Women's Champion I think she's the one that's next whenever they decide to take it off Shayna Baszler she gotta be the one who's gonna win it up next we got Johnny Gargano defeating Shane Thorne when hitting him with a super kick the fourth match of the night we got NXT Women's Championship match Shayna Baszler defeating Candice LeRae I was expecting Shayna to lose because she has been so dominant and it's clear that she's gonna continue that but it still sucks that Candice lost. We have Pete Dunne defeating Danny Burch and after the match the lights went out and Damian Priest laid out Pete Dunne and I'm very interested in this feud so bring it on and then for the main event we got the NXT Tag Team Championship match Undisputed Era defeating the Street Profits. Awesome tag team match even though I feel like the NXT Championship match should have been the one to close the show. Nonetheless, after this tag team match, we did get Adam Cole coming out on the stage to celebrate with his Undisputed Era brothers, but that celebration didn't really happen because the former NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa made his return and the show ended with him staring down Adam Cole. So there it is guys, certainly a lot of debuts, a lot of returns, and a bit of unexpected stuff with NXT of not just Tommaso Ciampa returning but Finn Balor also getting moved from the main roster Raw and SmackDown to NXT which technically now is a main roster show so I probably should stop using that word. With all of that said let me know your thoughts down in the comments below whether you like or didn't like from each of the shows or if you're watching only one of them what do you thought of it. Anyways guys I thank you for watching this NXT slash AEW roundup if you guys enjoy don't forget to elbow drop it and if you found this informative for much more hit those notifications notifications and subscribe to the channel we're on the road to 200,000 subscribers i'm going to see you dig it